Welcome back to Hudson Appliance and Wicked Good Food. I'm your host, Matt Williams, and today we're talking chicken. So what I've got is two whole chickens, and I'm gonna go through the whole process of taking the whole chicken, breaking it down into some of its parts, and we're gonna cook each of those parts. The three things we're going to make is we're going to take the legs and we're going to braise the legs with a little bit of chicken stock and some red wine and some vegetables. We are going to take the thighs and we're going to saute those and make a really quick and simple chicken marsala over pasta. And then the breasts we're going to make into a pan seared chicken breast with a honey butter jus. And I'll show you about how all that works later. But first I'm going to get to breaking down our chicken. You know, we're getting to a time where people are kind of uh, afraid of getting a whole chicken. I know it's working with students, the first time they see a whole chicken, they're like, what is that? They expect it to be boneless and skinless and wrapped in plastic wrap and on a piece of styrofoam. But no, this is actually a chicken and it's actually much cheaper to use it yourself and you have all the other parts that you can use to make a chicken stock or if you wanted to make a chicken croquette with some of your leftovers, all sorts of things you can do. Anyways, here's our whole chicken. I'm not going to start out like Julia Child and take the cleaver and whack away at it. But I'm going to use this knife here. This is called a boning knife and it's actually designed for working with meat. And I'm going to use it holding it like this, but also I'll use a little bit holding it like this. Not, not like Psycho, but this is actually how this is designed to be used. And this is going to work to remove some of the skin and the meat off the bones. Now, the part of our chicken that's most valuable is actually our breast, which is right here. There's two sides of the breast. What we want to do is keep as much skin as we possibly can on our breast. So I'm going to pinch in between the leg and the breast just to kind of loosen up some of the skin. Then I'm going to take my knife and slice closer to the leg than to the breast, right in between here, and cut all the way through. Oh, you know what I forgot about? Here, hold on. I forgot about the giblets. So inside this little bag here are essentially all the other edible parts of the chicken. There's no feathers, there's no eyeballs, anything like that. These are organs that can be eaten. There's different cooking methods. We can do those on another show. Some need to be cooked low and slow. Some would be great to use, like the liver and making a little pate. So we've opened that up. Then I'm going to spin it around so you can see. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, staying close to the leg. Now there's a bunch of different ways to break down a chicken, but the goal is to have the chicken off the bone. And this is the way I like to do it. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to fold our chicken in half. I know you don't usually fold chickens in half, but ready, here we go. The kids always love that sound. But while it's in half, I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut right in between. By folding it, what I've done is I separated those bones. So you don't have to cut through the bones. Now I'm going to take our legs and thighs and just move them over to the side. And now we've got our breasts here and our wings here. Now we're going to do something called a statler breast with this chicken. <clears throat> and what a statler breast is, it's the regular chicken breast, but it has the first segment of the wing still attached. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove, I'm going to cut right here at this joint so that all that's on here is this first part of wing. And slice that right off. So there's your chicken wing to cook up for wings. Do the same thing on our other side. Now what you want to do is if I went to cut that and I, I couldn't because I was going through bone, I'd wiggle my knife a little bit so that I would actually go through the um, cartilage and in between the bones. All right, so now we've got our chicken breast. Right here, there's a bone. There's a piece of bone and a piece of cartilage. And this is what's going to separate our two breasts. So I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut right down. And I don't know which side I'm going on until I feel it with my finger. Now I'm on the far side of this to me, so I'm going to angle my knife back towards that bone because our goal is to get as much meat off as we can. Now I'm going to go back and do that on the other side. And spin it around. Now I say to my students all the time that working with meat is just like coloring. And the bones are the lines. You just have to stay in the lines. So you follow the bones. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tip of my knife and just slowly pull this meat away from the bone. Now on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. And I like to work on both at the same time, not do one then the other, because I find that once you get one of them off, the whole thing wants to flip over. So it's kind of a counterbalance. So just using the tip of my knife and my fingers and looking at what I'm doing. Now remember, we left that first wing section attached, so we're going to have to cut in between. 
our bone right there, to leave that one bone on there, right at that joint. And we should come out with a beautiful chicken breast that we'll trim a little bit of this excess skin off of. But you remember, we're going to do a seared application with this, so our skin's going to shrink up a little bit. So I don't want to get rid of all that. But this is what we've got. We've got a beautiful boneless skin on chicken breast with the first wing section attached, which is just a way to make it look a little nicer and to use up some of your wing. Now you can take your finger and kind of feel around, see if there's any bone. There's a little piece of cartilage here. I'll remove that. So that can go in here. And I'll do the same thing on this one, cut in between. You can see our little wing section there. That can go right in there. Now all this skin that you removed, this is some of the best stuff on the chicken. So if you take this and you put it in a pan over pretty slow heat, what will happen is it will render. All the solid fat that's in there will actually liquefy, which that fat is great if you're going to make a roux for, to make some turkey gravy or if you're, I mean, not turkey, if you're using turkey fat, but for chicken gravy or something like that. But the little fried bits of skin with a little salt, Oh, that's good times. Maybe a little lime juice on them. So now I've got this hunk of the carcass. It's pretty clean. I did an all right job. Um, this would be perfect to throw in a stock pot. Some nice cold water and just boil it or simmer it. All right, we're going to look at the rest of this now. So we've got two other parts here. We've got our legs and our thighs. And there's one bone here, one there, same on the other side. And they're attached right here. Now, Remember that the chicken's dead, it's not feeling anything, but we need to dislocate its hip essentially. So this is a ball and socket joint, so I'm going to put the palm of my hand here and I'm just going to lift this up. And you can actually see that bone pop right out. I'm going to do it on the other side. So remember, it makes your life much easier to cut around a bone than to have to cut through a bone. So now I'm going to angle back towards these bones here. Because I want to leave as much meat as I can on our um, leg and thigh. All right, so there's our leg and our thigh, skin on. I'll take a peek and see where I need to cut. Do the same thing on this end. All right, so now there's our leg and thigh, skin on. Now we're going to use the legs for one dish and we're going to use our thighs for another. So I'm going to actually separate those as well. So here you can do the same thing and you dislocate that joint and it makes a funny little noise. Separate that. Now I want to remove a little bit of this excess skin. That can go in our little skin pile for making cracklings with. So now depending on what we were going to do, we've got a beautiful bone in, skin on, chicken thigh. But we don't want that. We're going to pull the skin off and you can just use your fingers pretty much and pull the skin off. And for the bone, like I said, like coloring, you're going to essentially trace the bone just like that so you can get your fingers underneath. And then you can just kind of slide it off and just use the tip of your knife and scrape the bone until you get to the end. And now we've got our boneless, skinless chicken thigh. Now this is what they use for making General Gao's chicken. This is, this is the best part of the chicken, to me at least. It has the most flavor, it's the most forgiving. It has some fat to it so it doesn't dry out as much. So I'll show you what we just did. We've got our boneless, skinless chicken thigh. There's our skin on chicken leg. There's a bone on, skin on leg and thigh section. We've got our little wing tips here. And our Statler breast. And there it is. Now we've broken it down in all those pieces. Now, if I were doing this at home, I would have some uh, zip top bags ready and I would stick whatever I'm not going to cook in the zip top bag, stick it in the refrigerator, stick it in the freezer. I'm going to take a couple minutes, bone out this other chicken, sanitize this whole area so there's no raw chicken, no chance of cross contamination. We'll get back and we'll get to cooking our dishes. All right. So now my hands are nice and clean, our cutting board is nice and clean to make sure everything was sanitized. We want to be really careful that we don't have any cross-contamination. On the small chance that there could have been some salmonella on that chicken or something else, we want to make sure that that's not going to be an issue. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do our braise, which is going to take the longest. We're going to braise our legs. 
What we're going to do is take, I have this bowl of flour here and I'm going to season it pretty liberally with salt and a nice pinch of coarse ground pepper. I'm going to add some Old Bay seasoning just because, why not? Because that's what I had. And a little bit of onion powder. I'm going to mix that up a little bit. Now this might seem totally weird. You want to make sure you taste your flour. And see, do I taste? I get our salt. I don't get too much pepper. I get a little bit of the Old Bay, so I'm going to put a little more pepper in. Other than that, we're in pretty good shape. Now I'm going to take our chicken legs, stick them in our flour. This can go in the sink. And I have our pan heating up here. I'm going to turn it up a little higher. And I'm going to add a little bit of vegetable oil to our pan, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. And you want a relatively hot pan. You don't want it so hot that your oil starts smoking. But we want to get a good sear on our chicken here. Now the, the flour that's on this chicken is going to help promote a little bit of browning. It's going to add a little more texture, but it's also going to help to thicken our sauce. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it right in there. Make sure it's really well coated. And just kind of spread them around in your pan. Oops, throw a little flour all over the place. All right. Now I'm actually going to use this exact same seasoned flour when we go to make our chicken marsala. I want to just tilt this around and make sure the oil kind of covers the bottom of the pan and let that go. Now, I was talking about it earlier and I got excited for making some chicken crackling. So I have some chicken skin right here. I just cut it in about quarter inch pieces and I have it slowly, slowly rendering down. And you can see all that liquid fat in there. That would be awesome to use in this dish or any of these other dishes we're making. Or to just save it to put, cook your eggs in or to make some home fries in. All right. So I just want to check and make sure this isn't too, too high. Nope, we're doing great. And you know what? I'm going to do what I said. I'm going to add a little bit of this chicken fat right in here. Perfect. We'll let that keep on cooking. All right, now behind me, I have, let me knock flour off our tongs. I have our chicken breasts, and I have a pan that's pretty hot. I'm going to turn the heat up a little more. And this is going to be for our pan seared chicken breast. I put a little bit of salt and pepper on top of our chicken already. Now I'm going to take them and I'm going to put it skin side down. That's the noise you want to hear. You want to hear that noise. I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do our other one. Skin side down. We're going to let that sit. What we want to do is we want to get some great browning on the outside of that chicken. It's going to add some flavor, lots of flavor. It's going to add some color to our chicken. It's also going to add some color to our sauce. So now we're multitasking here. I'm going to check this chicken here. We're going to start to brown just a little bit. That skin that we purposely left on there is starting to crisp up a little bit too, which is great. All right, I'm going to check here. Nope, not yet. Don't fight with your chicken. The chicken will tell you when it's ready to come off the pan. If you try to lift it up and it's still stuck a little bit, just leave it be. It'll do its own thing. All right, now I have some onions and some, some red onion and some carrot. I'm going to pour right in here with this. We'll let that cook. We'll kind of spread it around a little bit. I wish you could smell it. It smells awesome. All right, then we'll check this. This is going around. Now, when you're making this pan seared chicken breast or our braise here, both of them you want to make sure you have in a pan that can go in the oven. It's going to make your life much easier than trying to move from pan to pan. You can see it's starting to brown a little bit in there. Not quite there yet. 